It was a point, of course, he had kind of echoed with our Brian. Kel Mead is back with us now in between interviews with the most powerful person on the planet. Bestseller is, I'm sure, to come out already. Andrew Jackson of the Miracle of New Orleans. Good to see you. Next week. Next, Next Tuesday. Week. All right. Uh, I talked Man, to the president I'll... yesterday about this. With, uh, Neil, I think what you're forgetting is that even if the commissioner said, I'm mandating every player stand, there's a players union. And the players union is not saying that every player should stand. The, uh, the players union is represented there at this meeting. Yeah, right? DeMar, and not, he wasn't supposed to be. This was supposed to be just an owner's meeting. Okay. This was on schedule. Damar Smith says, you know, says, listen, I'm not for, I'm not going to allow you to say all of a sudden without a CBA, without any negotiation, uh, universal truth, everyone stands. That's not what my players want. I don't want them to do that. I want them to do what they want to do. So you can't really fault the commissioner. He's not coming out and saying, I don't have the power, not my problem. I actually think it's good leadership to say, I don't think it's my place to do it, but, but I also what think is he can't do it. What are they bound to? Now, I, I, I've gotten different stories on this, that all players are supposed to be out on the field for Game the national Game day procedures anthem. is listed there, but not mandated. This is the way we prefer it. Hand over the heart, standing with your helmet under your arm, uh, listening to the but national anthem. But it's not anthem. a contract exactly. item, right? So they Where don't the have NBA to. NBA has to. that. Oh, NBA okay. has okay. it. LeBron James locked arms last night, but nobody took a knee. Okay. So... The middle ground that member Jerry Jones was espousing, uh, Neil in unison prior to a game, if that's the case, everyone stand with the national anthem. Players aren't inclined to do that. W where is the middle ground? Well, it's not Jerry Jones has changed. He's gotten tougher. He has. And yesterday he got a protester in the face as he was walking into the building, started screaming at him, you know, isn't this slavery? You demanding black players do this. He just kept walking. But the owners are afraid of that image, right? Absolutely. And they, and they should be. Uh, I think... I shouldn't even say they should be. They are afraid of that image. I think if you own a team, you can make the rules. And I think, listen, I'm paying your salary. I know we have certain rules. You also you get 55% of the revenue this league brings in. I'll show you the numbers. You're going to be getting less this year. You know those sponsors that are locked into three-year deals? Well, this is year two. We'll be all right for a year. But if this continues, the numbers are going to be less. In a fractured environment, a problem. Factor in this. The CTE and the head injuries had less kids play in this game. You're it right. already was a problem. Now you have a situation where the CTE, legitimate, play, legitimate problems, not from you and I who sit on the sidelines and say, well, I worry that, that you know, these guys are going to get hurt. Former players are saying, I wish I knew what I knew then. I wouldn't have played. Do I necessarily believe them? It changes their lives in many respects. I don't know. But, you know, when you have the Bonacanis come in, and now Nick, who is a very successful businessman and a Hall of Fame player, He's now got severe um, cognitive problems, and his son's in a wheelchair, and he says, I no longer can support football. I mean, they're synonymous. That name, Bonacani, is synonymous with But football. do you think there have been meetings like that with the players as to say, all right, here are the numbers. Here's the money that you got last year. Here's what you'll likely get this year. Here's what it could be next year. In other words, just say, all right, you can do what you want, but just so you realize this is what we're looking at. I think, yeah, I think they know in, in the broad scope, you're damaging the product. I don't care if you're all for taking the knee or standing tall. You're damaging the product by making people make a choice. You have a lot of things to do, especially you in New Jersey. You can go to watch the Jets or Giants lose, or you could actually do stuff with your family. Well, you know what? I'm making a choice between patriotism in some cases and football. I'm probably going to choose the country. And you're making people make that choice. And I, and I think a lot of sports fans like myself are resentful of it. Not that they shouldn't have a voice. I grew up with Muhammad Ali as my idol, Cassius Clay, the name change, everything like that. I have no problem with Jim Brown, who I coasted a show with, and him, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Bill Russell were active in the 60s. I get it. I want you to have a role. But they didn't take a knee during the national anthem. George Foreman walked around with a flag in his hand after he wins the Olympics. He came from a horrible neighborhood in Houston, and we were anything but a homogenous situation in America at the time. So he said, I'm pro-country. I want to make my country better. Here's my flag. That's still the way he feels today. I think what they understand is, even if their cause is pure and just, you're making us choose between country and your cause, and we don't know where this came from. It came not from Muhammad Ali. But both sides are finding ample ground to boycott, right? I mean, those who support the players say boycott. You know, those teams, of course, like this ESPN, you know, commentator, uh, that, that are forcing this on, on their players. And conversely, sports fans who say, you know, I'm going to boycott the NFL and their advertisers because of this. 
it's a lose lose. Yeah. So some commentators are saying, you know, especially in that case, uh, she's an African American woman who's spoken out before, said some bad things about the Celtics in 2008 about their organization. She got suspended for that. So this is her second time. She had to know it was coming. Still getting paid. So I don't know what kind of lesson right, you learn right. when you get a two-week suspension with pay and even more fame and glory. She'll probably go from the Tonight Show to Stephen Colbert. So in the end, it creates friction. Uh, racial friction in the country. It makes us question when we watch the game who's kneeling, who's sitting. And I hear somebody else the other day say, nobody takes more knees than the 49ers. And since they started taking a knee, they've won two games in two years. Is that so right? is that somehow uh, karma coming back at them? Um, the president, when he raises, the, a lot of people say he doubled down on this. A lot of players aren't forgetting the SOB remark. Um, is he complicating this? I originally said yes, and I wish he didn't weigh in. Um, but I, I think you've had me on before talking about taking a knee. So I've always been, I know exactly how he feels and I agree with him. Right. I just think by using the SOB word and getting so personal, I think he made it worse. I think if it comes out in a Neil Cavuto interview at 1 o'clock on Wednesday and you ask the president, what do you think about them taking a knee? That's different from on stage in Alabama, packed crowd, using that word. Very much so. So I would have done it different. Very much so. Brian, thank you very, very much. And